Okay, so we got to get on with our first topic, and we hope you guys enjoy it. But we have drama. Always some drama. Always some drama. Ooh, let's go. Ooh, let's ladies, go, we got go. to talk about some drama. Yes, Nicole. The drama of this week was insane. Ooh. Yes, yes. The drama this week has been insane. Trust me. We have some stuff that is getting ready to blow your mind. And we hope that you guys chime in because this is what this segment's all about, about the drama going on in the NFL. And why not get the biggest elephant in the room that happened today? Trayvon Diggs is out for the rest of the season when the NFL and everybody else has basically crowned the Dallas Cowboys defense as a great top tier defense. And you lose such a powerhouse. Now, guys, I don't know about you. I know I'm a fan. I am truly like devastated about it. But I, I, I you know, and I'm hoping and I'm, I'm wishing him well because it's just a season ending injury sucks. But mm -hmm. I will say that we definitely have a lot of players. We just, I think it's going to have to be a, a, a step up situation because it's definitely a big loss. What you guys thinking? Yeah, I mean, um, I hate to see injuries. You know, I know that a lot of memes came out of the most infamous injury that happened earlier in the season, but I still, I still don't like to see injuries. You know, I'm really sorry to see that happen. I hope it's not as bad as they're saying. I know they're still waiting on like right official diagnoses or whatever. Like, so I'm, um, I'm hoping for the best. You know, people are getting laid out. You know, Saquon again, like. <laughs> But I honestly, yeah. I'm really sorry. Like, honestly, it's, it's bad. I, I hopefully, you know, praying for some healing up his way. I hope it's not as bad as what it looked like. And I hope he heals up and can get back into that defense. Because you're right, he's a big Absolutely. piece of it. You know, he always outplays Huge. his brother, which I always think is funny. Right? Like, yeah. that's always been yeah. the joke between the brothers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's always picking him off. <laughs> Literally. So it's like, Dad, so it's just a sad situation. Nicole, what do you think? I mean, uh, I kind of felt for this one because I myself actually, when I was 16, had an ACL um, replacement and stuff. So, uh, yeah, that that recovery and that road is just definitely, um, you know, but he has he has the drive, honestly, to stay on top of it. And, and, and you know, that pathway, uh, you know, ah, yeah. it just sucks. Yeah. Injuries do suck, especially I was talking about. Um, digs today at work and they're like he's he's like one of the top you know like it, and it's just Literally. a bummer uh that yeah. but like i said he can come back but with um safe healing and and yeah he'll be on the sidelines trust me for sure giving those guys the energy they need still yes absolutely i, I totally totally agree but you know with this situation, we are finding it now that there are more injuries coming up, which is crazy because now we have a, a Nick Chubb who is out. Oh, yeah. uh, I don't know if you guys saw that he got injured. Saquon Barkley. Uh, how do you think that the teams will sustain without these dynamic players? Do you uh, feel like Dallas and Cleveland and you know, uh, 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 I mean, Jesus, Cleveland. And, and now that, you know, I, I think about it, I think Saquon Barkley only has a few games that he's going to yeah, be out. Yeah. But, I mean, still, how do you still, feel about yeah. these major players? I mean, with um, – now, with Cleveland, at least they acted fast and they brought back a familiar face, right, Kadeem Hunt. Yes. Like, they acted yes. really quickly. I think very smart. He knows their system, you know. He's not yes. Nick Chubb, but he'll get he'll get some runs for them, right? So yeah. I thought that oh, was very sure. smart of them is um to get a guy they already know know, they know can run the ball and then know their system, right? And so I think that was smart. Yes. I think that's what we're gonna see. Like I think we're gonna see people step up in Dallas because if they are that defense that we saw, the next man up, right? And I think if someone can hold the line to kind of step in, hopefully they've been learning from Trayvon. You know what I mean? That could just absolutely be the one that steps up and takes over that role. Um, same thing with Saquon. Like they should be used to it. And I, I the only reason is because he's always, you know, I feel so bad because he's something always happens that like this, you know, thankfully mm -hmm. it's not season ending. 
but he's still out, you know, for a few weeks. Yeah. And um, and so he's still gonna be a he's still he's a big piece we know of their offense. Like there's you know that's just who who that is. And so hopefully Giants have a game plan for that. You know, for someone else yes. that could be as dynamic as Saquon. So absolutely. What do you think, Nicole? Any of these teams gonna fail? You know. You guys would know those guys better than me, but what I can tell you from my point of view is that this is where, uh, you know, those, um, what do you call it? Those agents or the people that get that team together to see how well balanced the team can do and carry that person forward. Uh, so, and I know no one can spill those kinds of holes, but for a temporary, um, you know, put in and but this is where you you're gonna have to be balanced this is where absolutely it comes to play out next man up next man up absolutely i totally agree all right mm -hmm. ladies we got we talked about the injuries now we got to talk about disappointments it looks like the chicago bears have invested a lot of time and money and energy into a quarterback and 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 made sure that he was a top draft pick and i'm sorry delilah that this had to be on the drama segment okay. but they're talking about it all over it's what do there. you guys think like what do you guys think is this a lost cause well i i already mentioned this on <laughs> tuesday so we'll hear from the call because my my outlook on that was very balanced and nuanced because I looked at it analytically, even though it was hurting me, but I did look at it multifaceted yeah. uh, because I know what the issues are. And yes, I'm not saying that he's not a problem, but I also know coaching is a problem. I, I know that uh, they obviously, how do you regress? Because he was dynamic last year, right? And so yes. that doesn't make yes. sense to me. That's where I feel like 100% he should take accountability for just how bad he's been playing the first couple of weeks. But he wasn't playing like that last season. So what's the difference? You know what I mean? So I feel like yeah. there's a missing piece because how do you regress so much, right? Like yeah. how do yep. you not, how do you run into a sack? How do you, like you were running the ball when you couldn't find someone to pass. You know what I mean? So I just feel like yeah. something is wrong with the coaching. I don't like Luzgetsky. His calls are atrocious. Why do you call for multiple screens when you're way in your own territory, right? In a five or 10 yeah. yard line? Like, how do you do that? Um, and so I just, I'm, I don't trust any of the coaching right now. Like I really don't on top of just Justin, right? It's like, yeah. so I wish yep. I could put it off on his feet, but I think that, yeah, I think that something's going on in there because how do you not develop that and at least have him pass? I mean, look at Garoppolo. <laughs> I mean, I know yeah. he got one interception, but he's still passing the ball. You see what I mean? Look at Derek Carr. You see, yeah. so I'm looking at serviceable quarterbacks, right? You're yeah, absolutely. Tell me you can't get him to that level. That's what I mean. Like, so I, I feel like there's a disconnect. It still sucks. I'm super mad. Like, I'm mad at the defense. I'm mad at the coach that who knows what happened. Like, people, all these rumors were swirling. And Woo. then this morning, Ryan Poles is like, everything is fine kind of mentality. I'm like, excuse me, sir. <laughs> Everything's not fine. He had the most calm, collected. I, I get it. He's trying to show that. He's like, no one's panicking. I'm like, how are you not panicking? <laughs> yeah. You're all in two, and the next team you're playing is the Super Bowl champion Chiefs. You know? <laughs> like, so that's possibly 0 <laughs> 3. You know, and yeah. so yes, yes, I'm super like upset. I just need to see something change. Like his super calm demeanor completely like me aggravated me more about all of this. Absolutely. <laughs> I understand. I understand. Hey, but I gotta kick it to you, Nicole. Listen, did you I don't know if you heard about this, but I'm so sorry, Delilah, but they got raided. They got raided by the FBI. It looks like the defensive coordinator has resigned. And like like Delilah said, if you didn't know, they're acting like it's like, oh, you know, tomorrow goes on. And it's like, no, we really want to know about what happened today. Like, this is pretty crazy. Um, I, Nicole, why do you feel about it? I mean, what do you feel about this drama that's going on with the Bears and FBI raiding their uh, stadium? Jeez, that stadium's going to have a, uh, I don't know. I don't know about this, this stadium 
this uh so there's the fields and yeah. then there's the stadium the field is in the stadium <laughs> i don't know i know that uh justin feels uh it's hard starting um, to, to walk back. It was hard going at with the, the uh, losing, you know, in right in the beginning and get go. But honestly, yeah. Derek Carr even got um, rained at from his fans for winning, yeah. but still doing yeah. an interception. So, like, it's hard out there for those quarterbacks. So, like, <laughs> I got to give it out to Justin Fields. Like, absolutely. You know, and then this raid at on top of it. I don't know about, I had no idea, but now I'm looking at it. And like they could just walk in there unless it's like this is like um they could add this in their um yeah. resume of the stadium, uh maybe you know yeah. what I mean. You I don't know. To get... <laughs> first 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 stadium to get raided. Uh, first stadium to get raided. That's it's it's crazy. Because we are a think? sports show. I yeah. have to put it out there that everyone's denying of any raid because we are a sports show in the pack podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Allegedly. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, but everyone is saying no. Like, lawyers okay. for Alan came out and said that never happened. The lawyers and everybody, which they always do. But I just want to put that caveat out there as a football show that everyone is denying. Don't come for us. Happened. Don't come for us. Yes, yes. I just seeing now that they <laughs> there's rumors of an FBI. There's and rumors it says. So oh boy. Yes, so, yeah, rumors, that's why I, wanna, I want to put that out there in our humble football show. <laughs> that <was> yes. Happen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But, guys, there's, I mean, what can you do? There's always going to be stuff that happens. But, I mean, geez, I, we still want to know more about the situation. And I know it will all come out eventually. But it's just a tough break. For the bears all right my last piece of drama everybody <laughs> we got <laughs> we got to talk about cam Akers going over to the vikings it looks like the rams are sick and tired of cam Akers, and they said get the boot and get out of here now i want to ask you guys do you guys think this was a good decision do you think it'll work out good for the vikings well uh, I really, I didn't really know about this one, to be honest with you, Janae. It's brand uh, new, brand new. So I, I don't, don't even worry about it. It's just brand yeah, new. Yeah, it is brand new. Like, he work good with Kirk Cousins. Yes, he's going with Kirk Cousins. Okay, I, so I'm, it, I'm okay it with it. Could that. be, it, it could be, it could be a good situation. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I, I did you, Nicole. I'm, it could be a good situation due to the fact that, you know, they do need a little running back help. So the Vikings are actually getting some good things out of it with Cam Akers. And Cam Akers can actually run. We know this. Mm -hmm. uh, but what do you think, Delilah? I think this is a great pickup by the Vikings. I, you know, yeah. I'm not saying he's going to lights out, but he definitely can get some runs in. I think uh, Mr. Kirk, Captain Kirk, is be happy to see this guy show up there. I agree with Sean how he said they needed someone to fill in for Delvin when he left. Although Delvin ain't doing too great where he went. At least so far. Who knows? That could improve. Yes. Because sometimes you start off slow and then you take off. So that could change. But yeah, I agree. They did need to fill fill that spot. So I think that Absolutely. that was a good, smart move by Vikings. Smart move by also, like, the, you know, because they get additional picks out of it, right? And so I yes. think that it works for both of them. They could start kind of adding to you know next few rounds and a few seasons you know or use that right use those picks to get someone else you know what i mean so i think it works for yeah. both but i think it was a smart move definitely by minnesota going listen cam is unhappy and la is like i'm tired of this guy too like you said so absolutely. it might be a win-win for both of them <laughs> absolutely i totally understand all right so for my last one i want to talk about this because i saw it on the uh, news this morning. It actually just got added this morning because it looks like uh, fans believe that the Washington Stadium, the surrounding areas are dangerous, you know, when you're walking after the game and, and you know, when it's dark outside or when it's, you know, a risk. Do you feel like this could actually be a thing with these stadiums being in these areas where crime could happen? Do you think that people should make sure they're on guard while being at these games because it's looking like they did a poll 
that majority of the Washington fans don't feel safe. There was a murder that just took place. So it, it's, it's seeming like, do people need to really worry about these things as they're in these stadiums and coming out? I mean, for me, I'm more worried about the rivalry fans <laughs> more so than the neighborhood. Yeah. Because yeah. I've seen, uh, like, I don't know. I've se- That's what I've seen is more fights between uh, fans in these neighborhoods yes. than yes. the neighborhood themselves. Um, yes. And you, a lot of people, I mean, I don't know about e, um, L, L, the um, LRT, we call it the LRT, the train, yeah. the tram system. Yeah. Um, a lot of those, you know, uh, get taken and used during the game. There's not a lot of parking space for any yeah. kind of like theft like that. So, um, and you go, you go in herds as well. Um, you know what I mean? You see another person in, an, in another Jersey while you're walking, walk, you're walking behind you. So I don't know. That's how I feel anyways. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this mm-hmm. is just an open topic. We're going to see. Cause the thing yeah. is, I never felt like I was in danger at a game, but I also can't fault anybody for really being cautious after the game. What do you think about it? Delilah? Yeah. For me, because I grew up in the city. So I'm always on alert, I guess. You know what I mean? Yeah. So for me, yeah. I don't care where I'm at, what neighborhood I'm in. Uh, you know, I'm always alert just because I was raised to kind of be aware of your surroundings. And yeah. um, and just in general, it's like, be you know, be aware. It doesn't mean it's going to stop crime every time, obviously. But it's just kind of be aware Absolutely. of what's going on. Are you in a secluded area? Are you by yourself? Did you lose the crowd? Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's just certain things of like, where did you wind out? If you're not familiar, like, if you're going to game and you don't know the neighborhood, like, you know, that could be a problem too. So if you're going to games from out of town, go with people that you know, maybe they're, you know what I mean? Like, there's just precautions you could take because like, I'm from Chicago and everybody thinks we, we're shooting out every day. And it really isn't that, right? It's exacerbated. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm just saying like, you just have to be self-aware of what's going on. And I don't know if you could really blame it on the neighborhoods per se, because you do have stadiums that are moving to the suburbs. And like Nicole says, yes. right, right, you know, fights break out, like she said, between mm-hmm. tribal reasons. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. I feel like, yeah, I, I feel like that could happen anywhere. Absolutely. And that drama could unfold. And I really, as a human being, you should maybe be more street smart and kind of vigilant about what's going on around you. Absolutely. Absolutely. We see you guys have comments. We're definitely going to get to them, I promise. Very true, Nicole. Opposing fans bring the drama and sometimes in our fans. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, it could go down any either way. Uncle Sam Trainer always has me on the watch. It, that's what I'm talking about. You got to be on the watch at all times. <laughs> nah, most of y'all got to worry about FedEx and some 40-year-old dude trying to sell his rap mixtape out of his trunk. Yo, that does happen as well. I bought a couple. I bought a couple. 